Hello and welcome to ITNs. So we've covered quite a bit on the application protection service, right? I mean, we started off with the DDoS uh, and various other things we have taken care of. On this today, we are going to touch base on one of the last topics about application protection service. Yeah, and that is about Azure Private Links. So Azure Private Links can provide a secure connection between one of the uh, consumer network to a service provider. Right. So we are going to look at the workflow. What is uh, I mean, how the this sort of uh, connection happens. And then we are going to walk through the some of the key benefits of Azure Private Link, right? And uh, uh, that's all we are going to cover. And then in the next section, we are going to cover about application delivery service, right? Great. So before we uh, move to the session, I would actually ask you to click on the subscribe icon uh, so that uh, I mean you will get the notifications uh, about all the updates. Uh, about all my videos whenever it's getting uploaded uh, yeah and also please feel free to share this video with your friends and colleagues because I feel uh, that we should be sharing all these sort of these sort of uh, educations free of cost with the other friends and colleagues yeah great uh, that's all guys uh, we'll I'll, I'll see you in the session then thank you Welcome back to ITNs. So let's get started with our discussion on Azure Private Link, right? All right. So what is Azure Private Link? Azure Private Link enables you to access Azure PaaS service, for example, Azure Storage or your SQL database and Azure hosted customer owned partner services over a private endpoint in your virtual network. The traffic between uh, virtual network and the service travels through the Microsoft backbone. Yeah, exposing service to the public internet is no longer required. So you can create your own private link service in your virtual network, and that it gets delivered to your customer. Right. So let's look at the key concepts uh, for the Azure Private Link. Right. So Azure Private Link service can be accessed from the approved private endpoints in any public region. The private endpoints can be reached from the same virtual network, regionally peered VNets, globally peered VNets and on-premise using private VPN or express route connection. When creating a private link service, a network interface is created for the life cycle of the resource. And this, this particular interface is not managed by the customer. It is managed by the provider. The private link service must be deployed in the same region in, uh, as, as the virtual network and the standard load balancer or in short SLP. A single private link can be accessed from multiple private endpoints belonging to different subnets, VNets, subscriptions and or Active Directory tenants. And the connection is established through a connection workflow, which we are going to look in the coming sessions. Yeah, we are going to look on the pictorial overview of uh, this one, and then we'll look on the workflow. So, a multiple private link service can be created on the same standard load balancer using different front-end IP configuration. There are limits to the number of uh, private link services you can create per standard load balancer and per subscription. So those sort of limitations you have to be aware of before you can go ahead and create uh, this private link. Private link services can have more than one NAT IP configurations linked to it. Configuring more than one NAT IP configurations can help service providers to scale. Today, service providers can assign up to eight NAT IP address per private link service. Yeah. So with each NAT IP address, you can assign more ports for your TCP connection and the scale out. After you add multiple NAT IP addresses to a private link service, 
you can't delete the NAT IP address. This is done to ensure that active connections are not impacted while deleting the NAT IP address. Yeah, this is sort of a protection. Now let's look at the pictorial overview of how this how it actually works out. So you have two networks. Yeah, one 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 is your consumer network, and uh, the another one is your private network. So you can provide the service. Uh, the Azure private link service and the important components that are required in this is one is the uh, private endpoint which is part of your consumer network and the another one is your private uh, link service which is part of your provider service so based on the configuration your the traffic will flow from the private endpoint to the private link service using the Microsoft backbone network right now let's look on the workflow and see how it works out okay so you configure your application to run behind a standard load balancer, yeah, SLB. And if you're ready, you have your application configured behind the standard uh, load balancer, then it it will work uh, as it. I mean, with, with the uh, we can go ahead with the following steps of the workflow. The next what you have to do is you have to create a private link service referencing the load balancer, yeah, this one. All right. In the load balancer selection process, choose the front IP configuration where you want to receive the traffic, right? Because this is the traffic which you're going to get from your consumer uh, network, correct? Yeah. All consumer traffic will appear to originate from this pool of private IP addresses to the service provider. So you have to choose your uh, properties and settings on the private link service appropriately, correct? Then what you have to do is you have to share the private link service ID or resource URI alias with your consumer. This is this part is your consumer network, right? The, so you can share it uh, it offline, or you can I mean uh, advise that uh, publicly so that all the consumers, the re required consumers, can connect uh, over this network, private link network, right? So what based on this step, third step, what the consumer network guys will do is uh, they will create a private endpoint by specifying the private link service ID which was created out here in the step 3 all right and then accordingly a request will be sent and then the next part of the configuration is uh, act on the request to approve or reject it right once you uh, once the decision is taken right whether it is approved or rejected then the connection is established or rejected right so that's how the workflow works out yeah great now let's look on the key benefits of uh, Azure private link so Azure Private Link provides the uh, key benefits, uh, following key benefits. First one is uh, privately access services on the Azure platform, right? So that what you can do is you can connect your virtual network to services in Azure without a public IP address at the source or destination. Service providers can render their service in their own virtual network and consumers can access those services in their local virtual network. The private link platform will handle the connectivity between the consumer and services over the Azure Backbone network. Right? Let's look at the next key uh, benefits: on-premise and peer networks. So, with this, what you will get is you can access services running in the Azure from on-premise over Express Route, private peering, VPN tunnel, and peer virtual networks using private endpoints. There is no need to set a public peering or traverse the internet to reach the in service. Private link provides a secure way to migrate workloads to Azure. Yeah? Next one is about protection against data leakage. A private endpoint is mapped to an instance of the past resource instead of the entire service. Okay, so you can have that finer granularity of uh, control. Consumers can only connect to a specific resource. Access to other resources or in the service is blocked. The mechanism provides protection against data leakage risks. Global reach. You can connect uh, privately to services running in other regions. And the consumer's virtual network could be in a region A and it can connect to services behind private link in region B, right? Next, one of the key benefits is uh, extend to your own service. So you can enable the same 
experience and functionality to render your service privately to consumers in Azure. By placing your services behind a standard uh, load balancer SLB, you can enable it for private link. The consumers can connect directly to the service using a private endpoint in their own virtual network. And then you can manage the connection request using an approval call uh, flow which we actually checked uh, in the earlier slides where we look at the workflow whether you want to approve or reject and accordingly your Azure private link works for consumers and services belonging to different Azure Active Directory tenants yeah great so these are the links which I have provided and um, most of these slides are most of the content and the pictures I've taken it from Microsoft site so you can if you want uh, further information you can go through those sites and you can actually go through the further video training material provided on this link yeah great uh, thank you for watching and please do subscribe to the channel please feel free to uh, share the content with your friends and colleagues because I believe the education uh, like these should be made free of cost all right great until next time keep watching and keep learning thank you